So Thanksgiving is coming up, right? And everybody tells me that I should give something to the people less fortunate. But I like my stuff, and I don't want to give it to them. So <laughs> instead, I thought I'll share a lesson with all of you guys. And the lesson is that you guys should be selfish, and you guys shouldn't share anything. Right? <laughs> so it all started when I was five years old. It was my fifth birthday, and my dad bought me a remote control green card for my gift, right? And basically, I loved it, and I played with it all day. And two weeks later, two of my friends came home to play with me. And I was playing with my car, and they wanted to play as well, but I didn't want to share it with them. So my mom intervened, and she's like, let your friends play. But I didn't let them play. So, <laughs> so after they went, I got that one thought that all kids get when they're really young. And she told me that you should share your stuff, and selfish people are bad, and all that stuff, right? But now I'm 16, and I think that if there's one thing I've learned, it is that you can't trust your mom and dad, so... <laughs> so the definition of selfishness is lacking consideration for others, concerned chief, chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. And as you can see, nowhere in this definition does it say that selfish people hate others. They may, as a consequence of their own good, hurt others, but they don't consciously. And this is like a list of the interactions. Unselfish, selfish, sadistic, and masochistic. And the you interaction is what you would be feeling if you were one of these, and the them interaction is what others would be feeling. So as you can see, selfish people just want to feel good. They don't care about what others feel. And sadistic people want others to feel bad. And people normally confuse selfishness as something in between of these, right? And people tell others to be unselfish, but they don't realize that by telling others to ignore themselves, they're being selfish. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this weird contradiction, right? And just so that you guys don't feel that I'm making this up as I go, I have some evidence and some studies. And I'm going to start with philosophical evidence. And this is Anne Rand. And she wrote a book called The Virtue of Selfishness. And she had an opinion. You know how women are, right? They have an opinion on everything. <laughs> Her opinion is objectivism, and it was basically that if everybody cares for, the, for themselves and they don't really, um, they don't try to act selfless or selfish or hurt others consciously, everybody will be happier and society will benefit as a whole. And that's philosophical evidence, right? And then there was Richard Dawkins, and I know he doesn't look like a biologist, but he looks more like a model with that picture because <laughs> he's a model, I guess. But he wrote this book called The Selfish Gene, and in that he said that selfishness is what enables human uh, species to evolve. And basically, if a species doesn't look out for itself, how is it supposed to evolve? It just uh, goes extinct, right? So he said selfishness is the reason we're still here. And then there was Adam Smith, and he's the father of economics, I guess. And he said that everybody should care for themselves, and <laughs> society will benefit, right? The same thing as Andrew, and that's economic evidence. So, so what? So, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, in case you guys didn't get it yet, is that selfishness is good, and selfish people are happier. Let's have a look at something. <laughs> look at them. So <laughs> But, but seriously, look at them. That's Bill Gates, right? And normally you wouldn't think that Bill Gates is selfish because he gives so much money to charity, and he's not. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't give money to charity. But if you think about it, he would, if like, let's say he had some money in the beginning, right? And instead of doing what he wanted, and instead of making more money, he decided to give it away right at the start, he would never be able to make a fraction of the impact he made on the world today, right? And the reason we know him and we think of him as a phil philanthropist is because he was initially selfish and he accumulated his wealth. It's kind of like a skyscraper and the foundation, right? You can never build a skyscraper unless you have a really deep foundation. And in this case, I guess selfishness is the foundation. So in your everyday life, you could use this really easily. I mean, people ask you to help them, but let's say you aren't done with your own homework and you decide to help them. How are you supposed to help someone else if you aren't done with your own work? Because you, all you can think of is your own work. 
and you can't give it your best, right? And um, let's say you haven't slept in three days, and then at four o'clock in the morning, somebody comes to you and they're like, proofread my English essay. You shouldn't feel like a jerk for saying, no, I want to sleep, because your own needs come first. And if you don't look after yourself, how are you supposed to look after anyone else? So, yeah.